What's up guys, Will here with Rent Enthusiast, my YouTube channel that is all about Porsche ownership and the topic of today is seats. Custom seats that I'm putting in my 1976 Porsche 911. Sidebar really quickly, since I shot this video and was really excited about the seats, I have since had to drop the trans, drop the motor, and get into all sorts of, of items that uh, really that are mechanical in nature. So I won't be putting the seats in the car for a little bit. I will put a card up to uh, the video that I shot about the challenges I'm facing with the car. But in today's video, I'm gonna share with you the seats that are now complete. I had a shop called Sunderworks down in Charlotte, North Carolina do the work for me, and I'm very excited by the seats. So I'll share those with you at the end of the video. But before that, I thought you guys might be interested in getting some tips from the shop's owner, David Van Epps, about you know how to think through your own custom seat project, if that's something you're thinking about doing in your own 911. He's also gonna share with you the biggest mistake he sees people make when it comes to putting custom seats in their Porsche 911. I'd like to invite you to subscribe to this channel. This is the kind of thing I do, give viewers a sense of what it's like to live with these cars. I give you guys tips. I share with you mistakes I make. So if that's for you, definitely click the subscribe button, hit that bell so you're notified every time I publish new content. I'd also like to invite you to check out my merchandise shelf down below this video. Uh, I've got t-shirts in there, mugs, hats, all sorts of cool stuff that has been very, very popular. So check it out if you like wearing air cool gear. Let's jump into the video now. All right, guys, here we are back at Sunderworks in Charlotte, North Carolina. And if you've been following along, you'll know that I recently picked up an ice cream metallic uh, 76 911, and I am having my friend Dave over here. He will uh, do some seat work for me. And so I'm here to pick those seats up, and those seats are sitting right there. I'm going to share with you guys what they look like on the other side at the end of this video, but I'm going to tell you they look killer. Uh, in the meantime, though, I thought what might be interesting is to have Dave talk us through maybe some of some knowledge or information that you may want to know if you're in the process of thinking through maybe customizing the seats in your 911. And so Dave's going to give us a couple tips, and then he's also going to share with us the biggest mistake he's seen guys make when uh, doing a project with their seats. So Dave, I will now turn it over to you, sir. Okay, Will. Interactive here, though. Ask away as we're going. <laughs> Here's a pretty typical seat. This happens to be out of a mid-year 911. So first thing, all these Porsche seats are basically Recaro's. They're Recaro frames, Recaro foam, these are built by Recaro for Porsche in the period. Here's a pretty typical seat that's been recovered. This is out of a mid-year, and you can tell these things by certain subtle differences in the seats, like the way the cushion line runs, and I'll show you some different ones as we go here, but kind of what we might get. And this seat has been previously recovered. One of the reasons you can tell that, Will, different size of the perf. So somebody generically just found some perforated material here, and you can see the difference in that perf size. That's the standard Porsche perf size, and that's just something that somebody threw together uh, to recover this seat. Sitting or fitting a Porsche seat, I should say, is like, I use this analogy a lot, it's like buying an off-the-rack suit versus having a custom tailored suit. And when you look at the way some seats are done, you can kind of see the difference between uh, a seat that has been tailored for the cover for the individual seat that we're doing versus one where somebody may have either acquired a cover from someone else or tried to buy just a generic cover to put on the seat. There's a lot that goes into putting these seats together. And when we tear down a seat, this is kind of where you end up, Will. And you can see here, this is the original foam that's on a mid-year 911 seat. And you can see this happens to be the passenger seat, and you can see some of the stuff that happens to the foam as it gets compressed as people are coming in and out. And then we'll take this seat now and we will repair this cover to give it back some more body and life. So we'll recover this. If the seat is uh, reworkable, like this, this particular cushion is actually pretty decent compared to a lot of them that we get. The one I had over here a second ago, you can see is all completely torn up. We'll have to do either a complete cushion replacement on this, or we will have to do a lot of repair. But on a cushion, on a setup like this, we'll just add additional foam here to give it this balance and body. And you know, if the seat, like I know in some of my cars, you can start to see this even through the cover. Exactly. It starts to get mashed down. It's a no-brainer. People are getting yep. in and out, in and out over the course of 20, 30 years. And this, this uh, seam right here will start to realign on the seat as that's going in. So there's a, uh, the, the back side of this particular piece is going to rub, and that's why you have this difference in the way this lines up. So for this to, to end up with this sort of smooth finish in the end here, 
you basically have to make sure this is all smooth. It's like any other prep work and body work or painting your house or whatever. The prep work is just as important as what goes on in the end because if it's crappy underneath, it's going to be crappy on top as well. So now let's, let's go over to this concept of the off the rack versus a fit seat. So this is probably the hardest Porsche seat to do right here, and this is a 928 seat. You can see that it's effectively the same frame that Porsche used during this early uh, 70s and 80s, excuse me, late 70s and early 80s period, where we call this the tombstone seat. But then what they would do is they would make modifications to the inners and outers to give it a different flair for the 928. Very hard to do. These are both out of mid 80s cars. And you can see on this particular set of covers, whoever did this set of covers used a single piece here up the side, right? So it, it kind of makes sense. And you'd look at that and go, okay, that makes sense. It's not the way Porsche recovered these though. They did it with, a, with individual pieces here. So every one of these pieces is a separate piece that's running around in here. And that's how you get this nice tight look of these pillows as opposed to something that's going to be a little sloppy it's never going to give you the the fit down very tight look because it's not secured properly down at the bottom it's not glued properly to the lower cushion and on a seat like this it really is a function of not tailoring this cover to the cushion that's underneath i can never take someone's off i shouldn't say never but i can very rarely take someone's off the shelf cover and get a good fit on an existing seat unless all of the cushions are all brand new. Uh, and then that pattern that was used to make the original seat is excellent. So, so you were talking to me about this before, like some people will order a cover and then take it to a shop and have them put it on. And this, this tends to be the result, right? Yeah. Versus going to a turnkey shop that will do everything that you guys do here. Correct. You, you really, if you want it to fit nicely, it's got to be done to the cushions in the car. And it just makes all the difference in the world to get the tight, nice result that you want. I mean, and seeing these side by side, like if I saw this seat here in a car, I would be like, man, it's not terrible. Right. But you would notice that it just right. looks a little loose. You're going to have some of this puckering that you see, or you're going to have a, uh, a seam here, uh, this this uh, welt cord that's going to look twisted or yeah. turned. It's not going to, and everybody's seen that. You've all seen it. So, material matters a lot too, the right kind of materials, using the right type of vinyl, using the right type of leather. A lot of guys will call me, want to do some kind of custom seat, and they'll go, oh, I found this leather, but it was really a leather for a sofa. It's not <laughs> automotive leather. Okay, so right? that's a tip. Make that's sure definitely a tip. Make sure it's automotive grade leather. Okay. So, you know, the last point I'll make here is side by side, it becomes so apparent, the difference between like a cover and then something that was done the way that you guys do it. All right, so Dave, talk to me about the idea of material selection, because I think it's easy to go sideways and choose the wrong one. You touched on it a little bit earlier, like picking sofa leather, for example. But when you start to talk about tartan, you know, I think there's a certain weight sure. of fabric you want to order. In any of these sort of things, you know, you can, you can cover a seat with anything. But if you want long term durability, you need something that's got certain uh, fabric weight to it. In this case, this is a 16 ounce fabric. That's what you picked. And it's terrific. Other times, you'll get a much flimsier fabric. And, I, and I'm not sure if I have an example of that here because it's not the kind of stuff we use around here. But I can put foam behind that flimsier fabric and I can make that look really nice when you get the seat delivered. But maybe a year or two years from now, your butt may you know, rub right through that yeah. and you're gonna tear it, you're gonna have to redo it again. So you wanna get a good quality material. And the kind of stuff that you're normally using for these sorts of seats, and Will, I don't know what you paid, but you're normally looking at stuff that's certainly north of $100 a yard is what you're paying. Yeah, I'll just say this. I mean, I over-ordered because this, this particular material was tough to find. They had discontinued it or something. I can't really remember the story on it now, but it was not easy, so I over-ordered. Bought four yards, and I want to say it was like 450 bucks. Yeah. Now you and you probably need to do a set of inserts. You really need about two yards to do a set of so inserts. So that's a good tip. So I overbought yeah. times two. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it varies with the seat a little bit, but you never really want, if you're just doing inserts, you really only want to order two, two and a half yards tops. If you're bringing in door cards or some other components, then you want to order a little bit extra. And it's never a bad idea, and I'll say that to you as well, never a bad idea to have it, 
let's say somebody puts a cigarette hole in your new seat, <laughs> although I doubt they'd get in the car with a cigarette, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. They sit in it with a pen and yeah, put a hole in it. Yeah, cut it by accident, yeah. you know, whatever. Nice to have because you will have a hard time finding that again. Yeah. And you could just end up doing a repair versus it, doing something completely new. And it new. took months and months and months for me to get it. Like, it was back ordered and so forth. I mean, by the way, guys, I ordered it through a company called the Scottish Weaver. They've been great. This is the second order I've placed with them. And uh, But, yeah, unfortunately, it's just like anything else these days. It just took longer than it should have. Sure. So, Dave, I, you know, I alluded to this on the front end of the video. I got to believe there's like one like huge mistake you see consistently people make when they're trying to think through or either the, either they're planning a project like this or they've already done a project like this and it's got gotten sideways on them. What is that biggest mistake? They take their seat to somebody that doesn't really know a Porsche seat and how to attach a Porsche seat. So they'll take uh, a cover maybe that they've bought or they'll take, they'll just say, hey, I need to have this recovered and they'll go someplace that doesn't specialize in Porsche seats. Now there's probably five or six guys around the United States and so certainly a lot of guys in Europe as well that do an outstanding job on Porsche seats and there's some great companies out there. But not every upholstery guy knows exactly how to put one of these seats together to get the right tucks, the right tricks so that you don't get it to pucker in certain places. These are attached. A Porsche seat in any car seat isn't just a cover. It doesn't just slide over. It's actually got to be attached in many, many places under this seat down here and, you know, through uh, with, with pieces of fabric called listings that are pulled down inside the cracks of these seats and attached under the seat mm -hmm. with things called hog rings mm -hmm. that attach to the bottom of these springs. And that's what gives you that nice, taut, tight look versus something that's going to look two-dimensional, completely flat, because it's not going to be pulled down in there tight. Well, you know, along these lines, I'm ready to take a look at my seats. And uh, guys, clearly, I've already seen the front side. And I'm, I'm not even blowing smoke when I say that <laughs> I am very impressed. Um, this is exceptional work. And here you go. Uh, this is uh, going in that 76 ice green car. I'll give you an image right now of the Porsche factory sports seats that came with the car. But Dave, talk me through these seats before we wrap up. Here. Well, obviously we used the covers that came off these seats to make exact patterns. You had a good seat to work with because it was a relatively new seat. So we weren't really dealing with lots of broken down foam. Even though you'd only run these seats for about a year before recovering them, the driver's seat still had some foam repair that we needed here on one of the bolsters. Because I of drove it so hard, just, Dave. You know, well, that's what it is, Will. It's all that lateral G-forces <laughs> and so on. But, but the... Uh, the in and out sometimes will just break down that foam. So we did a little repair on one bolster, but then everything else is custom cut for this seat. And it just shows because it's tight and all the seams are beautiful and all the stitching is aligned nicely. And the, and the, the seat itself is super tight and firm and it just looks fantastic. It does. And this color combination with this tartan and this cork leather is just outstanding. Yes. And I'm glad we decided to break this band in here that was one of the debates we had. Yes. Do we do tartan centers all the way or do we break it with the band and add the Recaro logo? I think logo? this was the right one too. I do too, because I think this gives it a little bit more visual interest. Yes. It breaks up the tartan. It still brands it as a Recaro seat, which is great. But these just, they, they came out outstanding. I'm very pleased. I know you're happy with them too, and that's great. Yeah. So I mean, these I will give you many, many, many tens of thousands of miles of enjoyment with these without having to rework them. Well, and the key is going to be, I got to get the transmission rebuilt. And <laughs> well, that's another video, <laughs> the, the mo of Will. The motor back in. Yeah. But, you know, anyway, Dave, thank you so much. I truly am very, very excited about these seats, and I appreciate you coming on the channel. Oh, and my guys, pleasure. Guys, if you're still watching, I hope to see you next time.